Hello, hello everyone. Happy Thursday. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time when we can relax and craft together and I, for about an hour, and I work on projects from beginning to end so you can see the whole part of the process. So thanks for joining me. I hope you uh, click like on this page and I'll also put the videos up on YouTube after at Penguin and Fish Movies so you can subscribe over there as well. So thanks, I see you guys popping in. So today is Thursday, which means it's New Block Thursday for the Splendid Sampler to quilt along. So typically on Thursdays we get a new block. It's a surprise block. We get a new block for this project. But today, they did not have a new block. They are having a giveaway on the Splendid Sampler. Uh, so you can go check out that at thesplendidsampler.com. So they're skipping a week for the new block and uh, they're doing a giveaway instead, which means we can get a little further on, on some of our blocks today. So since I have it all out still, I think I'm gonna just continue on this block here, the one that we've been working on. So this is block 10, Around Four Corners by Rachel Daisy. There is hers right there. Uh, it is still available for free if you go to thesplendidsampler.com and then uh, click past blocks or just keep hitting like the back button. It's like a long blog post. If you hit the back button, it'll be the next, next one there. I also have a direct link in this post here. But we get like a free day to keep working on it. <laughs> I still don't think we'll get it done with this free day. Um, so I'm still hoping to work on this tomorrow as well. So I think today and tomorrow, we'll see how far we can get on this. So it's basically done. Uh, I'm just appliquing by hand all these circles on. So we just started and I think we'll just see how far we can get on that. I think for sure we'll get this center area and we had talked about yesterday stitching, instead of thinking of them as circles, to like stitch this out or this inner area first uh, and then kind of stitch around the outer edge. I think that'd be kind of fun. So we're, we're gonna try that out. Uh, I think we'll be able to, we got some weird points and stuff on these circles, on a couple of them. And I think we'll be able to figure that out as well. Um, <laughs> yes, Noeline, so Lisa's mentioning Noeline's dumbbell trick. So uh, when you're, and I love this too, so Noeline, uh, she's probably here, uh, if you are cutting with your, your ruler and your rotary cutter, what helps is putting a light dumbbell on there as well so the ruler doesn't skid around. So that's in Noeline's like go-to craft <laughs> supplies is the little dumbbell, which I think is amazing. So uh, if you have any more tips out there uh, that you want to share, anyone, be sure to write them down. Uh, and uh, so that's, that's tonight, guys. I'm going to start stitching. So I'm going to flip you around and we'll get going. All right. Get insitiated here. So I, you know, the kind of reason I wanted to do this inside first is because I didn't want to, I thought, maybe my chicken in here, my little chicken, would lay a little flatter if I just focused on this area first um, before expanding. So I thought that might be kind of, kind of an idea. We'll see how it goes. I'm just getting, getting Zeb out here again. We are using, I believe it's a size 11, but we're using that size 11 straw needle or Milner's needle. Um, so that's just, it's a, a Milner's or straw needle. They're the same thing, but they're just, they're, they're a bit longer than a normal needle. They still have the small eye for just using normal sewing thread. Um, the 11, size 11 is pretty thin as well. And that's going to help us going through um, this fabric. And I'm just stitching with, with the, um, oh man, I have another knot. I'm just stitching with that uh, thread that we've been using. Uh, for sewing. So this is just the normal sewing thread and I'm already having a ton of problems with with this knotting. So hopefully it doesn't after this piece. 
Deborah, no, there is no new block. I'm gonna get you guys a little lower so I can see your comments. Um, there, there's no new block today, and you know that was a discovery for all of us. I mean, we thought there was a new block coming, but instead they're having a little giveaway over at the Splendid Sampler. So the Splendid Sampler was started by Jane Davidson and Pat Sloan, so they're, they're the ones that run it, and they are having a little giveaway, a giveaway for Orophil thread which is this thread that I've been using here. It's the ones with like these orange little deals. The Actually the color of the um, little spool here determines what weight it is. So this is 50 weight. The 50 weight ones are always on, on this orange spool. I think the 12 weight, which is a um, quite a bit thicker thread, heavier thread that's on a red spool. And I don't know any of the other colors. Those are the only two I've, I've worked with before. Oh man, Libby, you're doing Merry and Bright and doing three of them. Wow. That's awesome. You guys that are doing more than more than um, one of these blocks. So far it's been just like a lot of, well, you know, I was going to say it's it's been a lot of handwork, but really it's only a lot of handwork if you want to make it that. I mean, I could have easily... Um, machine stitched these down like a lot of the other ones I didn't have to do all this needle turn stuff but it's kind of fun and I, I actually really enjoy this I really enjoy the handwork of this it's it's super relaxing especially when it's all turned underneath for you already um, I, I just I just like it even though I know it's gonna take forever I just I still like it it's just calming you're wondering if the granny score quilt we're doing is in a book um, it is not in Oh, is it in a book? No, you know what? I think it was from a magazine from a few years ago, and now they're selling it just as a pattern. Um, I believe it's on All People Quilt. I will, um, in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group, when we're done here tonight, uh, that's, that's, our, that's our little group. So first of all, if you're not already there, uh, click join and I'll, and I'll let you in. Then you can share and chat with us. But I will post a link to that quilt pattern in there. I, I would still, I want that to be our next quilt pattern um, that we do here. So we'll still be doing the sketchbook project. I, I have more planning on that than I thought. So that's taking a little longer. Um, so I'm still planning on that. Uh, I'm just kind of, I don't know, I'm kind of just, I don't think I need to actually do another stitch here. I'm just going to come back up through through this next, the next, um, the next circle here and just get started again, I think. Uh, but yeah, so we'll do the sketchbook project first and then we'll do this granny square quilt and I'll, I'll post a, a link to it again, like I said, in, in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group when we're done here. Are you using the, fem the Splendid Sampler quilt? The first one, I sure am, Lisa. I It is on my bed right now, the first Splendid Sampler quilt. So this is actually the second go around of the Splendid Sampler with completely new blocks. It's a completely different um, deal than the first, the first one, all new designers, all new blocks. And uh, um, I'm doing it again. <laughs> so the first one, the first one is finally done. It took forever to finish um, because I, I worked for a long time on the back of it and everything um, and the quilting and all that. So now it's now it's officially done and yep, it is on the bed. I've even washed it a few times. It's holding itself together. So that's good. <laughs> but yep, it's a real quilt in real use. Yeah, so I'm, I've been um, talking through the sketchbook project a little bit more. Um, so I'm, I'm why it's, it's taken a long time because first it was going to be really hard to get my hand on more books. So this, the, the sketchbook project is a project for my book that I did several years ago. And uh, the book is now out of print and it's actually not that easy to get your hands on and I have, I only have like a few left. So I thought I'd offer, um, offer the sketchbook and I own the rights to it again now. So I, I have um, the rights to the patterns. So I, I, um, 
I was thinking of maybe making that sketchbook project into a pattern just because I don't know if I'll if you don't have the book already I don't know if I'll have um, enough books so then there'll be a pattern available and I, I want to update the pattern a little bit because it's been a while since I've written the the book and the pattern and there's some updates I want to do to it like letting you guys know how do you adjust the pattern if you want to use a different size sketchbook or a different or a notebook or a different thickness of something um so i want to help you guys out for any updates like that you might want to do um so just a little rewriting and then if you guys have the book um we'll do a thing like just take a photo of your book and and email me and then i will i'll just i'll email you that pattern too so you know so all of you all that already have the book um you know get the the new updated pattern as well but then uh, if you don't have the book yet, then you'll have the option of getting the book with the pattern um, or just, just the pattern. And then I'll have, um, I have some little kits I wanna put together for it too. If you don't wanna look for your own sketchbook or your own zipper, it's just got a little zipper pouch built into it. Um, so that will be, I'm getting that together too. But the trick is, um, I was going through the pattern and the updates I want to do to it, those might take a little bit of time. And I and I was trying to get, I was trying to get all those, um, trying to get the other the books available, and and that hasn't been going great. So that's what's kind of taken some time. But we're still gonna do it. Oh, good. Yeah, the kit will be nice. I mean, it's gonna have some fabric. I think it'll include some, uh, just some really nice white linen to make like a really pretty, um, just like a nice feeling book cover that will be, uh, um, that will show off the embroidery. I'm gonna embroider my llama on it. So I have that new llama kit. I'm gonna embroider that on. You can put whatever you want on it. And I think I had this idea today, but I think I'm gonna show you a couple ways that you can do it. So I'll, I'll stitch and make the llama one. So if you want to learn some embroidery and stuff too, we will, we will do some embroidery. Um, you know, we'll stitch the llama and you can ask questions about stitches and I'll go through all, all like all my tricks for embroidery. Um, but I was thinking this sketchbook project would be a fabulous um, project if you just have one little lone quilt block laying around or something, um, you know, because I think I, well, I personally have a few just lone quilt blocks that never made it into a quilt and I never knew what to do with it. So they're literally just sitting in a bin in my closet. And I was thinking those spare little quilt blocks would be perfect for these sketchbooks. Um, so like if you have a bunch of spare blocks, just whipping up a few, um, like skipping the embroidery all together and only making the cover, um, doing that with a quilt block that you already have um, would be just really fun, I think. So uh, we might we might make a couple. We'll do the whole embroidered one and we'll make the embroidered one and the really pretty um, just white linen. Um, and then, then we might just whip up a quick other one with a quilt block. Even if the quilt block is too big for it, just cutting the quilt block down and using it as a background, I think that would be so cute. Um, can you tell us how you got started doing crafts? Oh man, well, there's a picture of me as a, as like a toddler uh, on one of those little tyke or whatever um, picnic tables that has paper on top and me just drawing, <laughs> scribbling back and forth. So I suppose you could say, you know, since then, uh, I've always for sure been um, into into making things. My grandma uh, always was making something. Like she was always crocheting. She crocheted uh, doilies and she could just do all that stuff, make clothes and all that. But my memory of her is like crocheting these doilies and and uh, um, my mom sews. And uh, we were always encouraged, me and my brothers always encouraged to like be creative and you know, we'd go to the Children's Museum. I remember we we went to the Children's Museum in Boston when we were super little. 
and they had these big bins of just random things like here's a huge like 30 gallon bin filled with like old computer keys or here's a 30 gallon bin or 50 gallon bin however big those giant bins are but like filled with like tongue depressors and I remember you could you could take whatever you wanted for those <laughs> so you could just bring home these random things and I remember we made stuff out of all those random things for years and years so us and our neighbors um, would always kind of be making stuff all the time and we'd like make little little television commercials for recycling and we'd make like all the props and so we we always me and my brothers and neighbors were always kind of making stuff I think I've tied myself into a little knot here but yeah and then um, later my mom started quilting I think she said that it was like a little after 9-11 that she started quilting and I started a few years doing quilting stuff after that um, and really I feel like I've only become comfortable with quilting related things um, during and after well during last splendid sampler that was like a whole education in everything related to like to like quilting and stuff so um, that's that's what I got out of the last splendid sampler just feeling comfortable doing all this stuff but I don't know I've always been crafting this is all I you know ever want to do <laughs> Um, Antoinette, the next project, we're, we're still going to be doing that sketchbook project. I'm just, I'm just doing the last figurings out for it. It might still be a little bit for a while. So I'm super sorry, you guys, that I'm so late on doing that project. I wanted to be doing that project a while ago. Um, but I'm just not done. So what, what I'm going to do right now is just kind of use this next, um, few little I don't know a couple weeks or so to just work on the splendid sampler blocks and maybe get a little more caught up with them because we're mega behind on all these I think I'm a, I think I about have a, about maybe a third of them done and then the rest are all kind of like at this stage <laughs> that they need a lot of hand work done so I thought we'd just do a little bit of that in the evening uh, until I have the sketchbook project ready and it, I will be sending emails for sure out about the the sketchbook project just so you guys know like the kit that I'm putting together for it and all that I want you guys to just like know that I mean I'm sure I'll be mentioning it on here but like when I have that available and stuff I'll definitely that'll be in the email so um, be sure that you're on that list uh, if you in my Facebook post here if you go to um, like scroll down there should be a link to get on that newsletter so I will announce it there so that's the next project I mean the next next project is I'm just gonna work on these blocks for just a hair um, until I'm done with a sketchbook and then we'll we'll do the sketchbook I still want to do that extra extra version of it too with the quilt block just because I think that'd be a fast easy and fun way to use up first of all make a bunch of cute Christmas gifts or something and then um, at the same time use up some old <laughs> old blocks that are quilt blocks that are lying around but after that so once we start that project it will go pretty quick it's it's a nice easy fun sewing project the longest part will be just embroidering the llama on it but that won't take very long either so after that I would like to maybe we'll do like one other little small project but the next larger project I want to do another quilt um, and that's going to be the uh, uh, granny square quilt and I'm going to post a picture of that with a link to the pattern um, in oh, man I'm stuck on a pin I don't need that pin anymore actually um, I'll post that in the penguin and fish crafters group uh, when I'm done here tonight so you guys can check it like in 15 minutes or so after I'm after I'm off the air here uh, I'm not doing a marathon on on Saturday Lisa that would be fun to do again um, but I'm not I'm not doing it this time I'm actually gonna see my parents again this weekend I'm super stoked uh, so I will be hanging out with my parents on on Saturday so um, not on Saturday but uh, we'll definitely do that again that's fun I like I like popping those in every once in a while 
a little um, Saturday sew-a-thon. So last time we did, last time we did the Saturday sewing, it was like two or three hours long. It was really long. We did that, I think block number five, because <clears throat> I had missed that week as well. So I missed, I missed that video. Oh, Kathy, you are so sweet. I just, I appreciate that a ton. Oh, you guys, so I'm just noticing I'm just noticing my computer. So I record my, um, I record these videos. I record my screen onto my computer and it, sometimes the program, it's, it's done in QuickTime if, if you're familiar with that, but sometimes it just conks out and it looks like it just conked out again. So what that means um, is that I don't have a video and this happened last night too and I, I'm trying to figure it out I restarted and I don't know what's going on but so there, there will still be a video on YouTube but it won't have the comments unfortunately so when when my computer doesn't record it correctly then I I don't get the comments in there too so that's why I know um, some of you are wondering where the comments were in in the YouTube last night it's because my program just sometimes it just conks out for no reason which is dumb uh and it looks like it did that again tonight so the youtube is not going to have comments again so i apologize in advance for that I'm trying to figure all this stuff out oh you're looking for the site oh to sign up for the newsletter so if you're at penguinandfish.com surely um it, it should come up with a pop-up it's a free you get a free pattern embroidery pattern as well um or somewhere on there it will say sign up for the newsletter if you scroll down a little bit. So it's on Penguin and Fish. That's that's um, where I'm at. Uh, penguin, A-N-D, fish.com. And then there's a link in this Facebook post, a direct link to, to the sign up. Oh, hey, we're all the way around. So check it out. We did... Um, we did the whole center there. I tried to tuck in these points a little bit, but it looks like I could have done a little bit better job. So we'll just have a little point here and there. But you know, this is this was, this was that troublesome one. And look at these outside points. So as I as I approach them, like here's a little one. I'm gonna try and tuck it in a little bit. I'm just gonna take my needle and kind of puff it underneath. Same here. I'm just gonna kind of grab the seam allowance and just kind of tuck it as I go and then tack it down, stitch it down while it's tucked underneath. And I'm hoping that will shape shape this circle a little bit. It almost looks like this needs to puff out a little bit. So this one's gonna be wonkier than the other ones. And instead of going back and fixing it, I just was like, meh, we'll figure it out. So I think all these other ones will be nice and round, but this one will just be a hair wonky and that's fine. So I still have some thread on here. So I think I might just continue with one of these circles. So I went on the inside. I'm kind of glad I did that. Then this whole center is kind of done, all tacked down. And you know what? I don't think I need that pin there anymore. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to just keep continuing. I'm going to go around this guy and we'll just keep bumping, bumping around here. So that is the plan. You can't tell it's wonky. Well, that's great, Gretchen. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> that's the thing. I mean, the person who is making it they're the ones that are gonna know all their little mistakes and stuff everyone else is gonna not even be thinking about that everyone's thinking of themselves you know no one's gonna be thinking of oh that person didn't they had that wonky circle <laughs> you, you know what i mean they're just wondering like where they're gonna eat next you know <laughs> all righty so I think uh, with this thread, I'll be able to get around the first circle at least, and then I'll probably need a, a new piece of thread. So one thing I'm doing while I'm stitching and the, the pins are helping, I'm trying to hold my my back fabric flat against the front because I don't want it to keep bunching up behind. Like, look, I could keep stitching and without knowing it, I could keep bunching this back behind. And that's what shrinks a block is you just keep, I mean, I'm exaggerating a bit here, but you just keep bunching bunching it up. So on a micro level, we're kind of still bunching it up as we go. But all those micro little bunches add up after a little while. And that's why we sewed this block slightly larger than our, our final six and a half inch. 
Um, that's why we, we added like that half inch all the way around. So I have room from it bunching up since that's probably likely to happen. Um, I have room to trim. Ooh, you finished yours today. You left the outside to get frilly and tattered. Oh, that's cool, Bonnie. Isn't that, I think that look is just so, just so pretty. Like you can, you can just leave the edges raw and that is adorably pretty that way too. Oh, you found it, Charlene signed up. Awesome. Thank you so much. And yeah, so that's where, that's, um, so you guys here in my Facebook lives, you guys get all the information first because I just say whatever is in my brain here. <laughs> so you get all the preview information here. Um, but after that, the like down and dirty info of things, um, that's all in my newsletter. So that's like the second best place to get the details of what's going on. You guys hear about it first and then the details go in in the newsletter. Uh, and then, then I get to posting it on all other social media after that. So you guys are, you guys are in the prime position here for info. Uh, I lost a, I unthreaded my needle on accident. Should put out your mistakes. No one notices them until you show them. Exactly, Noeline. That's the truth. You guys, I gotta show you just because I'm, I'm hearing it clack around, and you guys might be hearing it. I have to show you um, the bracelet I'm wearing today. It's um, it's all sea glass, so it's all like you know garbage that has been pounded around in the ocean. Um, and I got it from my, my brother and his, his wife for Christmas, I think. Yeah, Christmas. And I have a hard, a super hard time wearing uh, um, bracelets just because my wrists are like the smallest wrists that ever existed. So I can never really wear bracelets. But I my husband got me this blue shirt that I'm wearing uh, for my birthday, but it's been too hot to wear it until now. So I, I'm testing, I'm testing things out today, guys. I'm, I'm testing out this shirt for the first time. And then it was just this pretty blue. And I saw, I saw this bracelet just laying on my dresser and I haven't worn it yet either just because it's hard for me to wear bracelets. So I didn't, I didn't do it, but it's the exact same blue as the shirt. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to test out that bracelet today. I'm always worried that these type of clasps will just fall off, but it's held up all day today. And I'm having a good, a good shirt and jewelry day today, people. It's making me feel good. <laughs> oh, that's Lisa. That's actually where this is from. It was when um, my brother and his wife were living there for, oh, I think maybe just a year or so. So they're, they're getting all that ocean-y stuff. Oh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I like it. It's just like, I love bracelets, but I never, I never wear them because they're too small. I don't think I told you about, about this one yet either. So this is what I got when I was in New York at Catbird, that place I was talking about, I think the other day, but I don't think I showed you the bracelet. But they um, they have this little place where they will actually weld the chain to you. So this has no clasp at all. <laughs> it's just a little chain. And they got like, you know, the players and the machine and whatever out and they, they just had a tiny little jump ring. I think it's actually right here, the jump ring and they welded it on. So this is, this is like stuck here forever. It's my forever bracelet. <laughs> you can actually cut it off if you don't want to wear it anymore, but I just thought that was great. It's like, ooh, my first, my first bracelet that I can comfortably wear. <laughs> so that was kind of, that was my 15 uh, year wedding anniversary from, from the hubs, gift from the hubs. So I got to, I had to get the fun bracelet. You used to do that too, and it won't fall off. You, you used to weld the bracelets on. That's 
freaking awesome. <laughs> That'd be a fun thing to learn. Yep, they zap it and it, it sparks. It's fun. All right, I might not make it all around this um, this circle with the with the first thread, but I think it's looking good so far. Every step just makes it look more and more finished, I think. You know, like now that these are stitched down, this one to here, I mean, that just looks really pretty and finished. So I'm, I'm excited about getting these other guys, other guys down too. Um, but yeah, I might need to bail on this. I definitely will have to bail on this thread before I make it around, I think. Yes, put a washcloth down and hold it up and weld. Ah, fun. That's so cool. <laughs> it was just a neat, fun experience. And I followed them. Like, you know, I feel like I buy everything from Instagram and Facebook posts now, but I've been following them. Catbird is the name of the jewelry store. I've been following them on Instagram for probably over a year. And before they started doing this welding thing. And I just thought that was so neat and filled, you know, you gotta feel uh, the need. And the need for me was that bracelets never fit <laughs> and always fall off my little wrist. So I'm like, oh, there's the solution right there. Just get it welded up on. Oh man, I lost my thread again. I think I'm gonna end the thread. I'm gonna loop it around this spot one more time and then tie it in a knot on the back and get a nice fresh, fresh piece of thread. This one's just being mean. Can't even thread it anymore. There we go. Oh, you lost a very expensive gold bracelet out shopping. Ah, see, that's what freaks me out. And that's why, that's why I've veered away from bracelets. Like I'm so freaked that that might happen. It's funny though, you forget that you have this on and every once in a while, I'll feel it, and in my head, I'm like, oh, I have a hairband on my wrist. And then I'm like, wait a sec, that's not a hairband. Antoinette, there was not a block today. So uh, I, I looked this morning, you know, like all of us, we wake up and then we check out the new Splendid Sampler block. I did that this morning, and they didn't have a block there. Instead, they're doing a giveaway. So I think if you take a photo of your favorite quilting tools or your favorite sewing tools, whatever it is, your favorite thing, and you post it on the uh, thesplendidsampler.com page, then I think you get entered into a giveaway. And the giveaway is for a bunch of Aurofil thread, like a, like, a, I don't know, like a sampler pack or something of Aurofil thread, which would be a great win. Um, but yeah, I know, I was kind of bummed, bummed too, Gretchen. That's like the, the thrill of Thursday is getting up and checking out uh, what what that new block is going to be and what technique we're going to be dealing with, you know what I mean? Uh, so I was excited, and then, so I was a little like, oh, it's not going to be on there. But then right after that, I was like, okay, but then I can keep working on this guy. <laughs> All right, here's a next thread piece. I'm gonna thread it and then cut. I can't ever pick up this needle. It's actually not, you know, it's, it's super bent here, my needle, um, but I'm still using it. It didn't get bent from this particular handwork. Like it's not getting bent from this um, needle turn applique stuff. Where it's getting bent is when I do the English paper piecing and I'm holding those pieces together and working, I don't know, whatever it is, the direction that I stitch or whatever with the English paper piecing, that's what's bending my needle. It's not, it's not doing this needle turn applique, which is kind of funny. But I'm still using it. All right, get a little bit. I wouldn't get a ton of thread, like just put a little bit of thread. Like I have maybe just a hair over a foot and that might be like, yeah, I have about 18 inches, but that might even be too long just cause you know, you get more knots and the thread gets more worn. The more you pull it through, you know, it gets more friction on it. The more you pull it through fabric. So it's, it's kind of better to use a shorter piece and then keep adding to it. But ugh, that's a hard, that's a hard thing to learn. I, I love, you know, having a long piece of thread and working it down, but that's, that's not what's best for 
the thread typically and it knots more and everything, but I don't know. I like it. Where do we leave off? Right here. So I got a little knot. I'm just gonna start right up. Just trying to get right on the edge. There we go. That's that's looking pretty good. But yeah, so uh, um, we didn't have a new block, so we're catching up on this guy, and I think I'll probably just continue this tomorrow. What would be amazing is if we got it done tomorrow. I don't know if that's entirely likely, but it might be likely, because today we did like all of the inside of this, and we're gonna get one circle done, and we still have some time. We might get like, partially the next circle done. So hey, we might actually get this finished um, by the end of tomorrow. That would be pretty schnazzy. That'd be a good deal. It'll be nice to have another one, um, another guy out of the way here. Oh, you're able to catch me. Yay. Thanks for joining, Amy. Yeah, I know this time doesn't always work for everyone. This 8.30 time 8 8 30 central um that's why that's why i like kind of peppering in those saturday morning ones every once in a while um but yeah i won't be doing one this saturday but that's always fun because then lots of people who usually can't come in but you know watch the replays and stuff get a get a chance to come in i'm gonna make this a little shorter by pulling pulling that other thread bit more. I know, another one bites the dust, exactly. I want to get, um, I want to get caught up on all these other ones, though, because I'd love to lay out these first ten, but just to, like, peek at what we got going on so far. Every once in a while, it's fun to pull them all out and pretend you have a real quilt going. <laughs> uh, but I, I just don't think I have enough finished to do that, and I don't want to pull out from my binder. I don't want to pull out um, ones that aren't done yet. I don't want to ruffle their feathers, basically. I'm trying to touch them as least as as less as I can. That's not the right phrase, but whatever. Um, just because I don't want to, I don't want to, after it's done and cut to size and everything, I don't want to be rubbing these edges. I want to keep those as clean as I can um, so it's just easier when we sew the final quilt together so I don't want to take them out very often but you know sometimes at little milestones like black 10 you gotta right what was my first quilt well it was um it I don't know what the pattern was but it was it had a few little stars and I did it uh, where my mom would go to get fabric and stuff. So it was this little shop in Oakfield that was um, pretty traditional fabrics and everything. And, you know, a shop where they're, well, they're guiding you and they have classes and stuff there. So I took a class there for a quilt and it was my first quilt. It was basically squares, but squares that were offset each row so i i gotta sew long strips sew the long strips together and then cut those to make um to make you know like groups of three and then they were all offset so it almost looked like rainbow diagonal lines with these with these squares and then every once in a while one of those squares would have you know half square triangles on it to make like a little star so it's these like warm colors that are these like probably three inch squares with these little stars. And then I hand quilted it just with like a pearl cotton floss, just a running stitch up the, up the rows. And that was, that was the first quilt. I remember I was only in town for a little while and I wanted to get it done. Like I wanted to go back before I left so she could show me how to do the binding. And so I had to quilt the whole thing in a night or something crazy. So we are watching movies or whatever and I'm like frantically doing these like running stitches. 
up these rows. It was just a lap quilt, but still, that's a lot of quilting. Uh, and then I went back the next day and she was, you have that done already? But I was on a mission. I wanted to get that binding on, learn how to do that binding before I, I left town. I think, I think it was after college. I, I, I don't, I think I started quilting after college. So, um, gosh, I don't know where I was for this, but anyway, I had to get back home. Oh, yep. I kept it for sure. I think it's, um, it's somewhere. It's either in the car. It might be, um, we have random quilts everywhere. So uh, lap quilts, especially. So it, it might be one of our quilts. We have a few lap quilts folded upstairs, um, in the bedroom, just in case it gets super cold. We can just grab a little lap quilt for ourselves. I think it might be in that stash. Otherwise we have some quilts in the living room in like this box and we grab those pretty often for napping those are our napping quilts napping on the on the um couch quilt which is what i want my um charming chevrons quilt to be but i'm, I'm still not done with that you guys either so ooh, it is almost gonna be we're gonna have a finish it friday coming up here soon um maybe i'll have to well, there's not that much to finish on that chevron's quilt. All I have to do for the chevron's quilt is trim trim all the little threads off and wash it. So I guess that's not really a good Finish It Friday project. Um, so we'll have to come up with something else. But that's a little while off yet, a couple weeks. All right, first circle is completely done. It was kind of fun doing this separately. But yeah, so this guy's all the way around, and I'm going to... Uh, pop onto this one. Now this is the one that I'm gonna try and form a little bit. So I'm gonna like look closely. I gotta keep looking from far away and then close up and far away. Like I gotta keep switching my brain a little bit. So from far away I can notice, okay, I got a weird point there. I got a weird point there. So I gotta mentally keep in mind, okay, remember that I got those points to try and tuck in. Is this the most time consuming block? Well, I haven't finished the other time consuming blocks yet, so <laughs> I think probably not. Um, I think if I had to guess what one will be the most time consuming so far for me um, is probably gonna be the clamshells one because the clamshells has a, like this arch that we're doing here, but times like 15 or something, <laughs> maybe not that many, but oh, and I have to finish the embroidery on that one too. Uh, if you're comparing this to the first Splendid Sampler, it is by far definitely not the longest one. <laughs> there were some on that first one that took ages and ages and ages and ages. I mean, I love them. I think they're just super cool blocks. But holy cow, those aren't get them done quick blocks. Not all of them. All right, so I just tucked in that point. That was my first little point that I really wanted to squish. So I squished it down there and held it there with my finger and then stitched it down before I could pop back up. And so that's how I'm dealing with that first that first one. So this is, you know, kind of a weird arch, but I'm going to just go with it. And then here is maybe the next little bit that I'm just going to kind of have this just keep arching the best I can. So that's the next place that I'm kind of keeping my eye look out for. The hardest for you in the Splendid Sampler one had about 64 pieces in that one six and a half block. So I'm guessing, Deborah, that you are talking about uh, that one where it had those like tiny, like half inch sized uh, hexes, English paper piecing hexagons. That one had, gosh, yeah, at least those 64 pieces, all teeny tiny paper pieced by hand, right? You had to stitch them all first of all, and then stitch them all together, and then stitch the whole thing as a big applique piece down on, on the paper. That one took ages, but it looks so cool. Hooey, man, though, that one's making me tired thinking about it again. And then there were several other ones, like, uh, there was um, some that had a lot of needle turn applique, which again, you don't need to do needle turn, but I was pretty stoked about learning how to do needle turn. 
applique, which is kind of what we're doing here, a form of needle turn applique. Folding under the edge and then stitching it down. Turning, needle turn, turning it typically with your needle, but we're pre-doing it by, we pre-folded the edge. So we, it's, this is like cheater needle turn applique. Uh, but yeah, some of those, like that Hawaiian quilt one, and actually there was another one with flowers or something and a lot of little details with needle turn. And I made the decision to do that one needle turn applique and that one took me quite a long time too. And I was learning the whole time too how to do needle turn so that it was great because now I feel like I got some tricks for the needle turn and I'm, I'm a ton better. But man, it, it, it took a while. You love the look of them and they're all so beautiful together. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I, Deborah, same here. I learned so much on doing that quilt. And that's one of the reasons that I'm doing this second one too. It was just crazy how much I learned. Like it's totally a worthy quilt just to practice a skill or learn a new one or like be brave for six and a half inches. You know what I mean? And and do try something that feels really difficult. And then, you know, it's it's a good, you just do the six and a half inch block and then you can breathe and you don't ever have to do that again if you don't want, you know? <laughs> but you gave it, you gave it a go. So, all right, I'm, I'm at that next point. I'm just kind of, I'm kind of just grabbing the seam allowance and kind of tucking it under. See, I'm just tucking it and I'm just going to squish it with my thumb. See if I can get that arch a little bit better. And I'm like about to stitch away yet, so I'm going to stitch down and I'm hoping I can stitch that little point down. Oh, there, it looks tucked under quite a bit, so that's good. Um, let's tack it down. And keep going. There, I think I got a stitch right on its point, so that kind of pulls it in. So that's looking, that's looking decent. Um, here's the big one. That's the big kind of point. Oh, Lisa, me too. I absolutely love being here with, with all of you in the evenings. You really don't know how they do the half inch hexi quilts. It would take a lifetime. No kidding, Nolene, for sure. Um, some, what she's referring to is quilts that are made out of tiny hexagons that you English paper piece. So they're like this big, a little hexagon, and then you're sewing enough of those. You're, first of all, you're making enough of those hexagons and then sewing them by hand to one each other to like, you know, ultimately have like a queen size quilt or something. That would take a lifetime. <laughs> There's a half inch hexi quilt in, oh man, at the quilt museum, over 2000 of them, oh man. Yeah, I'm nearly halfway with these circles, totally. I just keep, keep chatting, <laughs> so I'm not stitching. But yeah, and we did some of that center area today too, so I think we're actually kind of cruising. I'll stitch this for like maybe another, I don't know, another eight minutes or so. We'll see how far we get. Maybe we'll get this whole circle done. I think that might be pushing it. Um, but then we'll call it an evening. And at this point, I'm thinking we can pretty confidently finish this tomorrow even if it means just staying a few extra minutes, which, which I don't even think it will. I think we'll, I think we'll finish this dude up. Ooh, Robin, congrats. That's so exciting. Robin's uh, youngest son is giving you a crayon, baby. That's cool stuff. Congrats. All right, here's that point that I'm really just now trying to form. Make it a little more circular. This is the most glaring kind of bit. So if I can make this feel circular, then, then we're okay. So I think I got it a little. I'm going to tack it down a little. I kind of formed a new point there, but I'll, I'll tackle this part first. Fun, fun. Oh yes, baby quilts. Those are those are fun to make. All right, now I'm taking this second kind of nubbin fold over. Let's see if I can make this feel like a circle. There, 
I think we've, we've shaped that a little bit better. I'm gonna keep going. The next kind of part is up here, but I might just not bother. I might just keep stitching it down it, as it is now. Did you never like the star quilt? Yes, so um, that it's a, uh, she actually works with me um, on, on Penguin Finch stuff, and so she's a friend. And I, I missed her party because it was on Saturday when my husband and I were in, um, in New York still, so we didn't get to go to the baby shower, which was a huge bummer, but uh, uh, another friend took photos of her opening it and stuff, and I think she she liked it. She wrote like a super sweet thank you card and and it was just it was nice. I think she liked it. But yeah, finished it up in time for the party. <laughs> that was getting close. Had to had to do that on a finish it Friday and get that guy done. But that was fun. Yeah, those baby quilts. That's really when you can experiment a little, or you can either crank one out real quick, or you can use it to like experiment with an idea on a small level. Like you're not committing to do a whole queen size quilt or something. Oh, it's killing you, Robin. Was it someone here? I can't remember. Did someone here, they found out like they were gonna be, they're gonna be a grandma or something and wasn't allowed to tell anybody, so she told, like the person next to her on the plane was that someone here i thought that was so cute <laughs> telling telling the strangers on the plane because she wasn't allowed to tell family or tell like tell friends or anyone she knew someone made a baby quilt for your baby and you you put it up and never used it oh yeah that was fun i definitely want to try that whole free motion quilting uh, tacking down or, or couching down is what it's called couching down yarn and stuff again that was fun I would I would experiment with with that idea some more and we gotta do that was kind of like my first post um, charming chevron use of free motion in a quilt so that was that felt good it was like woo I'm one of those free motion quilter people now <laughs> that was exciting even though it was just like little loops and some of them were pretty wonky, but hey, it was a real life quilt with real life free motion uh, quilting on it, which was, I was always super scared to do, so I was pretty dang stoked about that. All right, yeah, we're gonna finish this little circle here. Oh, today your grand girls made sugar cookies. Yum. And we were talking about baking some zucchini bread today. We got those, when we were gone, our zucchinis just grew into baseball bats, basically. They're huge, huge zucchinis. So we have a bunch of these giant zucchinis and Someone mentioned, oh, zucchini bread would be a good idea, and I've been thinking about that. So maybe we'll try and, maybe I'll bring some to my parents' house and maybe we can try making some zucchini bread. Oh, someone had couched a Christmas tree, um, free motion, on Pinterest. Oh, I'm gonna have to look at that. Oh, she licked all of the sugar cookies, oh man. What's the name of the product interfacing that has adhesive in both sides? Uh, it is... Man, I always get this confused. Oh, the steam -a seam I think that's what I've been using here. I have some right here, Linda, I believe. Yeah, so this is this is what I've been using. It's the steam -a seam 2. It has a paper on. Uh, there's there's all sorts of different kinds, so it's kind of what your intention is, Lydia. There's some that have a paper backing, so you press on the first side first and leave the paper backing and then you pull the paper backing off and then the other side is revealed. There's um, the one that I'm using here. I've only used it a couple times but I like it so far. Uh, the different weird thing about this one is that it has 
it's like a sticker as well. So it sticks your applique where you want it as well as irons it on after you iron it. So it's just kind of funny. Um, there's some that don't do that. Yeah, heat and bond light or heat and bond and heat and bond light that has the paper backing as well. I think Sulky has a product for that as well. Uh, then there are, are also the ones that don't have the paper backing. So those, you can't iron one side first and then the other because it'll stick to your iron. I think that's more for like garment sewing -y type stuff. But for applique, we're using one that, you wanna look for one that has, it's, it's got an adhesive on two sides and one side is paper backed. At least one side is paper, got paper, so you can press on it without, you know, it's sticking to your iron. Ooh, let's get rid of that pin. Oh, I don't, I don't need this pin anymore either. We are tacked down. I have a little bit of a bump here yet, but that's okay. That is how this circle is gonna be. And there's one kind of here too that I'm gonna try and tuck in as I, as I get there. But that will be that. Is that the one you said was kind of sticky on one side so you can move the applique part? Yep, Deborah, this, um, this uh, what is it called again? The steam a seam too. That's the one that's also sticky like a sticker. So you can place it and then replace it and um, move it around a little bit before and having have it stay in place before you before you press it all down. Lemon zucchini bread, yeah, that sounds amazing. Okay, so I tucked that bit under. I'm gonna just try and puff it up again so it looks circular. I think that'll do. Oops, sorry. Bumped you guys. Okay, let's see where we're at. Okay, so that is that circle. What did we do? We did this bottom one and this one up here. So this half is done right now. Um, I think we're gonna stop there and I have some thread on here all ready to go for tomorrow. I think we will just keep going on this tomorrow and I am totally confident that we can do these two little bloops and trim it down tomorrow. So I think uh, I think we'll get this done. I am so happy about that. So two extra days and we get a block done. That's, that's exciting. So, all right, guys, I'm going to flip you around and we'll call it an evening. Hello. So here it is so far. I think you can really tell that you got that white square. I was worried about that because I, that white was pretty close to this cream color, but I still think... I still think you can tell that it's there. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. We will have a finished block by tomorrow. Um, so yay. So I'm gonna get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. It won't have the comments, unfortunately, again, um, but I am trying to figure that out. Hopefully it doesn't conk on, out on me tomorrow as well. So no comments, sorry about that. Uh, if you do wanna go look at the comments though, they are still here on Facebook. They're just under the video. Um, you can see everyone's comments. Uh, for that. Oh, and the new new blue shirt testing. Yep. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, oh, and I'll also, right when we're done here, I will, in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group, I will post a link to that granny square quilt that I would like to do uh, soonish here as well. Our next, our next quilt. I want that to be the next quilt. So that is that, and I will see you guys tomorrow again at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Adios, guys. Good night.